throughout our lives. These acute symptoms can be the result of an injury, so you kind of know what happened, or can seemingly come out of nowhere. Today, I want to talk a little bit about managing these aches and pains so they don't turn into something more or turn into a persistent problem. I will add a disclaimer that this is not medical advice, but educational material only. And if you feel like you've suffered a significant injury or have symptoms of a serious medical condition, please contact your doctor immediately. So first off, when experiencing a new onset of pain or non-significant injury, don't panic. It is most likely not as serious as it feels. So once you kind of assess the situation, there's no severe open wounds, no broken, obvious broken bones, things like that. Then you want to take the next step. So some of you may have heard of the RICE or PRICE method for managing acute injury. And this stands for uh, protect, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Some recent studies have kind of suggested that maybe we change that acronym and have a little different approach to uh, acute injuries. And they, pr they promote the acronym POLICE. And POLICE stands for Protect, Optimal Loading, Ice, Compression, and Elevation. And this seems to be a better and more active way to manage acute pain and injury and expedite the healing process. Protection can come in many forms, such as decreased loading, avoiding certain activities or movement short term, and utilizing assistive devices such as crutches, canes, or walkers. These are good to be used in the very early stage after injury to allow your symptoms to start to calm down, but this can definitely be overdone. The goal is to move out of this protection phase as soon as possible and to remain as active as you can around those modifications. For optimal loading, I like to take a quote from Tom Groom, who's a, a pristine uh, physiotherapist, in his article, Acute Injury Management, on his website, runningphysio.com. Um, while rest may be very helpful in the short term, continued rest can lead to de deconditioning of the tissues, which can lead to joint stiffness, muscle weakness, and tightness, and reduce proprioception and balance. Optimal loading keyword here is optimal, will stimulate the healing process as bone, tendon, ligament, and muscle all require some loading to stimulate healing. The right amount of activity can also help manage your swelling. The keyword here is optimal, and in some cases, this loading may be no loading at all, especially in severe injuries such as unstable fractures, tendon ruptures, etc. Um, but outside of those cases, you want to be able to start to load the injured area in ways that you can tolerate. There's no recipe for this. Each situation needs to be managed based on each person, how they feel, how they progress, and under the guidance of a health professional. This optimal loading, in my opinion, is the most important but least recognized stage of this acute recovery process. It's important to continue to stay active and to slowly return to loading the injured or painful tissues as soon as possible to reduce those losses in strength, mobility, function, and deconditioning. So we do want to protect, we do want to avoid certain things early on, but we want to still stay active around that and start to move the area as tolerable as early as possible and as safely as possible. When we talk about ice compression and elevation, they're pretty straightforward. A couple rules with ice. You never want to ice over a numb area for risk of ice uh, burns, and you never want to ice over an open wound for risk of infection. Limit your icing to about 10 to 20 minutes at a time uh, and try to have some kind of barrier between the ice and your skin. For compression, you know, things like an ACE bandage works well. Nice gentle compression, but make sure it's not tight enough that it cuts off circulation, creates numbness, pain, or anything below the level of compression. Lastly is elevation. Um, elevation can be an effective way to manage swelling after acute injury. Um, this must, you know, the best way to do that is to have the injured area as best as possible elevated above the heart. Um, and combining, combining all these three together early on, especially in the first week or so, can help reduce swelling and get you back to being able to move earlier, uh, as early as possible. So the goal of these things, ice compression and elevation, are really just to minimize pain, minimize swelling so that you can start to move the area earlier on. Remember that uh, when you experience acute pain or injury, you'll want to always avoid or reduce the aggravating activities early on, but you still want to stay active and stay moving. You want to focus on gentle movements that don't aggravate or the injured area or increase your pain or symptoms. As you start to feel better, the pain eases, 
then you want to start to avoid of return to those avoided activities and focus on activities that load and challenge the entire body as well as the injured or painful area you want to slowly progress that load progress range of motion progress that movement return to full activities over time as you can tolerate it uh, this will be kind of a moving forward moving backward process it's never a straight line so understanding that uh you know your your goal is to move forward each day but you're going to have good days and bad days and it's okay to take a step back if needed as always if you go at this alone and don't feel like it's moving like you should or if you're unsure what to do seek out help from a qualified medical professional that will help guide you back to your goals and activities again this is dr jp gidry uh, if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me at john paul j-o-h-n-p-a-u-l at gidrypt.com